Hey, this is Eric, and we're going to talk a little bit about back-end technologies, and we're going to do a comparison between different frameworks and see which ones that you should know in 2017. So first, before we begin, we just need to take a look at what is available out there. We know we have languages for Node, we have languages, Node.js, Elixir, Ruby, Java, Python, PHP, .NET, Go. These are all really popular out there. This course, others out there, C, C++, all these have their own implementations of different web frameworks. Some are sponsored more by the technologies, others are done by different groups of people, but every one of these have pretty popular back-end frameworks to work with. So we're going to look at which ones are out there, which one are more of the common ones out there. There's a lot I didn't cover if because they're so obscure, but I'll look at the more popular ones, and then we'll talk about what I think you should learn if you had to pick one. So, of course, one of the most popular ones out there is Node.js. Uh, it uses JavaScript, and it has these are the four the top four web frameworks for Node.js. Sales, it's kind of enterprise grade MVC, App Creator, it uses blueprints. You could kind of I guess you could probably make comparisons of it to Ruby on Rails, but it makes it really simple to create your Node.js app. I've used it, I've done a few tutorials on it. I'll link some in the show description below. Express.js is one of the first web frameworks I learned. It's fast, it's unopinionated, uses a lot of things called middleware to help construct your application. When it means unopinionated, you really can use Express in a lot of different ways and a lot of different things in, in the node stack, so you don't have to do it a certain way. Uh, and it's also made by a guy named, named TJ, and he also created one called Koa, and it's made by the same people who made Express. And it's kind of a smaller, more expressive, more robust, no middleware included with it framework. I've tried it. I didn't think it was quite as easy as getting started as Express, but your mileage may vary. Happy, uh, a rich framework for building application services. I use this a little bit, but it uh, kind of falls another MVC web framework for Node.js. So Elixir is extremely popular. I have done a lot of tutorials on that. It's based on Erlang, or Erlang, and it's a fast, reliable web framework. You're definitely, if you're coming from the JavaScript world or Ruby on Rails, you're going to have a little bit of a learning curve, just kind of some of the ways it handles things, but it's really powerful, and I'm actually doing a series on it now. So it's, uh, it's really great. There's other ways of more frameworks for Elixir 2 that I didn't mention, but Phoenix seems to be the most popular. Ruby on Rails. So if you haven't been under a rock for the last 10 years, if you have been under a rock last 10 years, you may not have heard of Ruby on Rails. It's a, Of course, it's one of the most popular frameworks out there for the back end. Of course, you can serve front end files from it too. Um, but it's easy, really easy to get started, has all the scaffolding, has a huge community, lots of features. Some people even would call it maybe bloated, but I don't necessarily think that. It's a great way to get started if you want to create a server and you want to get some help on it. Now there's something called Sinatra, which is a simple lightweight framework, kind of like a micro framework. It's based off the Rack web server interface. So if you don't need everything from Ruby on Rails and you just want to get started and you really like Ruby as your stack, then Sinatra would be a good place to go. Now Java, there's a lot of different options. So I just mentioned a few. There's the Spring Framework. It's an application framework and an inversion of control container for the Java platform. There's also something called Spring Boot, which uses Spring 2. And you use in in the Java world, you have a lot of things to learn if you're trying to get started running Java. I mean, you can look at application servers like Tomcat or Wildfly, and then you actually have the applications themselves. And of course, Java is it's pretty heavy duty, especially if you're doing enterprise level web development and you need a lot of resources and power behind it. Play, I've heard really good things about Play Framework. 
Uh, it's based, I guess, in Java and Scala, but uh, I've never used it, but it looks like it's uh, stateless, web-friendly. Vadin, I've heard some people in my work use it, and they really enjoy it. Uh, Grails, it's kind of the groovy version of Ruby on Rails to use in Java development, and there's JSF2, which is still really popular. On Python, we have Django. Django is a high-level Python web framework that encourages rapid development and clean, pragmatic design. So if you're coming in from the Python world, you want to take a look at Django. Flask is kind of compared a lot to Sinatra, where it's kind of like this micro framework, doesn't have all the features of Django, um, but it it's still pretty powerful and fast. PHP, there's just so much out there. Laravel, Fuel, Cake PHP, Symfony, Zen, Lumen, Slim. I think uh, if I I've heard most most people talk about KPHP and Laravel as being really good frameworks for for PHP to start with. Of course, you don't need these at all. You could just start writing PHP code on the back end, but this makes things easier. Of course, it's good for rapid development. Web application simpler, faster, and requires less code. And .NET, there's two ones I've heard of. There's definitely more but asp.net mvc i think number five is the latest gives you a powerful pattern based build to build dynamic websites that enables a clean separation concerns so if this if you're really into uh windows uh you have like an is server windows you're looking at enterprise or great enterprise level type of applications asp.net will probably work well for you and then there's something called service stack which i've heard people talk about which is super fast thoughtfully architect it. And Go, uh, Reveal, a high productive web framework for the Go language. It seems like the only one I could see when I when I Google and I search around, everyone talks about this, but it's still Go, it's still in it's in infancy, and I haven't heard too much about it other than this could be the way to go. So of course, after looking at all these backend frameworks and technologies, we're going to try to think of what should you use? And of course, this is going to really depend on what you're trying to build. If you're trying to build just a really simple website, you might just use PHP on your back end. If you're looking for enterprise solutions, you might try to go to something like Java or ASP.NET. Of course, I know that some Ruby run Rails apps that are running with many thousands, hundreds of thousands of users that do fine, but Usually that's what I think of when I think enterprise level. If you're like a, a fast moving startup and you wanted to choose a back end and you want someone uh, a community that has a lot of developers, you may want to take a look at something like Ruby on Rails or Django because the communities are pretty big and you're always going to find developers for those two, so especially Ruby on Rails, even though it's not quite as popular as it used to be. If you want a little bit more cutting edge technology, you may look at something like Elixir. And, and Phoenix, the Phoenix framework. So if I had to choose one kind of web framework for each one of these languages, I would choose Express for Node, just because it, it's Express is still used widely. Everyone, um, it, there's a lot of tutorials, a lot of resources, a lot of people like Express. Elixir, um, kind of the one you'd want to go with is Phoenix, of course. It doesn't seem like there's too many other choices. Ruby on Rails. It's not quite as popular as it was, but if you're using Ruby, that's what you want to go with. Java, this is kind of hard. I've heard people saying use JSF, but I think Spring is really the way to go because it's all the features. Python, Django, uh, PHP, Cake PHP. You may, you could definitely make some arguments for some of the other PHP frameworks too, like Symfony, but or Symfony. And .NET, ASP.NET, MVC, that's really sponsored by Microsoft. And then go with Reveal or Revel. So thanks. That's just a quick introduction to some back-end technologies that you can use to create your websites. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Please click that subscribe button. That's great. You can also reach me on Twitter at Eric C H. Thank you.